Hello everybody, welcome to the round six preview against the Western Bulldogs. It's going to be a quarter of the way through the season at the end of this game and, and that's that's fascinating how quickly this is all going by. Obviously last night on the show we spoke about going to the hub, we're on the Gold Coast, uh, we know the next two fixtures are going to be against the Doggies and against Port Adelaide, uh, but we're focusing here on the Doggies and to be honest with you I'm very, very wary of the Doggies, you know they've won three in a row. Uh, they've passed all the tests that have been thrown their way over the last month or so. Uh, you know, the GWS Giants came at them physically. They were able to withstand it and, and just beat them with class. They had a good win last week against the Sydney Swans in a game that they probably should have won. And then the North Melbourne game. I mean, I didn't watch the game live. I was watching the Port Adelaide game. And, you know, to, to look at the stats and... Maybe I didn't get a good picture of the game, but from all reports, you know, you look at Bontepelli was very much well held. Bailey Smith was concussed and, and he was out of the game after after not even the first quarter. Um, but they've got uh, the rest of them that are just humming along nicely. Some of these names uh, who may not be household names, they're just playing a role. And it sort of tells me that's a hallmark of a side that's really hitting their straps. They've got a good, even mix of contributors along the way. Um, you know, guys like Lipinski, Vandermeer, the new kid, uh, Josh Bruce pop, bobs up last week and kicks six goals. Um, I think Tim English is starting to turn a corner. So some of these doggies are just starting to really come into their own and, and they're getting an even contribution. And I guess on the flip side for us, you know, we have our, our best players. We're not, we're not at their best against the Saints. And unfortunately, the rest of the players weren't able to step up. And that's probably where the positive comes for me this week, because so many of our players were down on, you know, the performances that we know that they can put in. And so I would hope that there's going to be a response from most, if not all of those guys that were down against the Saints. Um, but having said that, I, I mean, the Doggies deserve to be favourites in this game. You know, they've got guys who have won a premiership, you know, they've, they've played in big games, they've played in big moments, they they know how to win. They've gone through that process. It was, it sort of, it was streamlined for them. They got, they got their wins really early, they got their premiership early, and I can only imagine what that does for their confidence. You know, these guys, you know, Bontempelli's not going to have, you know, two horrible games in a row. And, and then by the same token, you know, we look at Cripps, I think that's the battle that everyone is going to be watching really closely, whether you're a Carlton fan or a Doggies fan. You know, the two young superstar midfielders in the competition. Um, and I just I just mentioned that bontepelli has been down. And so you wouldn't expect him to be down for two in a row. But with Cripps, you know, he's been well held the last two weeks. Not at his absolute best. He might have been playing a bit of a selfless role against the Bombers, but at the end of the day, he's our best player, or one of our best players, and you know we really need him firing and 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 really to to set the tone for the rest of the guys to to follow. And you know I think this is a perfect matchup for him, one on one against Bontempelli. You know that these guys have an eye for each other. You know that when they compete against each other, that brings the best out of them. And challenges are going to be there. Uh, we've got a, a big break. Obviously, we played on the Thursday night. So to have that extra couple of days to get prepared, um, you know, I know that we were in a hub, but I don't, we were at right the early stages of, of the hub. So at the moment, it's really not too dissimilar to just an away game. And, you know, these are the games where the group gets together. You know, they, they, they bond a little bit more. I think having a group like ours who are all for the most part, at a similar age profile, given that they come one draft after another. Uh, I think that's going to bode well for the guys uh, to get that cohesion. And, and you know, it, it's it's time for a, a little mini reset. You know, we've got a two-week block now, so we've got to get we've got to get out the blocks. And, you know, we I don't think we fear the doggies. And I say that because of how we played against them last year. And it could be a combination of how the doggies play. They don't like to tag. They like to go head-to-head -head and back their players in. Um, and obviously, we've got guys who were, who were really talented, and, and both games last year were extremely entertaining. We had our, I guess our, I don't know if you call it a breakout game last year. The first time we played them, it was just, it was perfect. You know, in in the end of the day, at the end of the day, it ended up becoming a, a flash in the pan because we didn't win many games after that. But the second time we played them, high scoring, you know, the, the infamous Charlie Kerno seven goal game and... Obviously, he's not going to be there this week. But what it does is it pre presents an opportunity for what we know works against the Dogs. And, you know, we look at guys like Harry, if he's going to play this week, you know, he has an opportunity now to really, you know, elevate himself. Because I think for the most part, our, our forward structure has been 
Inconsistent. I think our midfield has been inconsistent from the viewpoint of our, our pressure. They're not putting enough pressure on to allow themselves opportunities to get clean ball to our forwards. And by the same token, they're not putting enough pressure on at the moment to allow that relief for our defenders. So if the ball is going to be coming in quickly, we're going to get beaten. I've, I've seen enough of us this year to know that if you if we turn it over and, and teams get us on the counter and they're clean with the ball, uh, they're going to hurt us. And, you know, Bonto Pally's one that if you give him enough space, he's going to make a, the right decision. You know, he's a beautiful kick of the football. But, you know, obviously guys like... Uh, Joe Hannison, he had a pretty good game last week. He's one that I'm very concerned about, and I always am. I think he's he's not very good every week, and it's for a reason. It's because you put, you've got to put work into him. So if he gets off the leash, I mean, you know, it's it's going to be a, a long, long night for us. Josh Bruce is the other one. I mean, he's kicked six goals straight last week. And again, I didn't watch the game, so I don't know the context of how he kicks the six goals. But you look at their recruit, you know, their mature age forward recruit, Obviously, he's come in there to give Norton a bit of a, a chop out. Norton's obviously injured at the moment. So Bruce steps up. And, and that's what I'm looking for with a guy like a Mitch McGovern. I, I think him and Josh Bruce. I don't. I think Mitch McGovern can, can be viewed at in a similar light to Josh Bruce. I don't think Josh Bruce is miles ahead of Mitch. And, you know, I'm looking for Mitch to really respond from last week as a, as a leader of that forward line and as a mature age player. Um, you know, at the end of the day, what do we need from these three tools if we decide to go with these three tools? Something like six, seven goals between them is, is probably what we need at the end of the day. You know, we know that scoring's dipped a little bit. It's probably the same as what it was last year, to be fair. Um, but we do need more output there. And, you know, I, I, I can't help but feel like it's just they'll be, our boys will be very confident and not looking at it like it's a free hit. But, you know, when you're not favorite and we are not favorite a lot of the time, uh, it, it can help with your preparation because it puts the onus on the dogs to come out. And, you know, there's there's that there's that adage of, you know, if they come out with that, oh, it's Carlton, we're definitely going to win. And they're that one or two or three percent off. I think that's where we'll get them. And so it, it looms as an interesting matchup. I can see, you know, a lot of possessions. Uh, I can see stats looking good, you know, very similar to what I saw in the GWS game on, on Sunday. Stats looked great, but you know, was it the best game? I'm not, I'm not too sure. So I'm wary of that as well. I don't want to get sucked into the numbers too much. But, you know, we, we have shown this year that we can move the ball well. You know, when we, when we do slow it down, it's probably something we haven't been able to do over the last few years. But I'm seeing extended passages of play where we move the ball pretty well with the short kicking. It's not something that's been, you know, a, a focus of ours because we just haven't been able to do it. But with Doherty there, obviously, he's a beautiful kick of the footy. He sets us up. You know, Sam Petrescu, Seaton's the other one as well. And, and to touch on him, it's, it's an important game for him because we haven't seen him be at his absolute premium this year. I think the, the game against the Bombers where he had a, a lockdown job on Tipper, obviously you've got to give him the points there. But um, a, a game where we come up against the Dogs and a game where he's played very well against them. You know, this was his breakout game and it begs the question, you know, do you put Samo into the midfield? You know, do you want to do it just for one week because he plays well against the Dogs? Probably not. If his role that he's spoken about, uh, you know, throughout the preseason is to go across half back and help generate attack for us, then so be it. That's what he needs to do. But the point is, we I definitely want to see more from him and, and a lot of them. There's a, there's an even spread of who I want to see play well. In terms of changes, uh, a lot has been spoken about the, the three key tools. I'm not in the camp of dropping Harry at this stage. I understand he hasn't fired yet. Um, it was his first game back last week after missing the week before. So I do want to see him get two or three or four games in a row um, because obviously it's it's just, I'm in the camp of, yeah, he's out of form, but he's the future. And the only way he's going to get match fit is to play in these games. I don't think the practice matches are going to bode well for a guy like him, a key position guy, to get serious sprint work in and, and, and repeat efforts. But Look, the, the, the clock will run out at some point, I guess. He, he's going to need to show us something. And again, if we can if we can apply the pressure you know, that we've done for two or three of the games out of the five from the beginning, then, then we put ourselves in the position. I mean, the, the blueprint is there. The season tells us you start well, you put yourself in a winning position. We are one of those teams who are pretty fit. So no matter what's happening in the game, we back our fitness in to make a push. But... You know, I don't want to see us get into a four-goal hole to start the game. I don't think anyone does. No team wants to go four goals down. So 
but that's important for us and it starts in the middle it starts with Crips. It starts with the big pit. You know, I think English is having a, a, a really good block of, of games at the moment. Uh, I, I've noticed the Ruckman that's, that tend to get on top of English are the, the bigger, bullocking Ruckman. And, and Pitternet could loom as someone who can really, really hurt English around, maybe not around the ground, but at stoppages, his strength, you know, English is he's probably a better athlete and, and probably better around the ground. But um, I, I would back in the pit to compete. That's what he's there to do. And I think he'd be looking at this matchup as one where he can he can really expose English at, at stoppages. So it's going to start there. But listen, the first quarter, we're, we're, we're becoming a team now where you just kind of know for the first 5, 10, 15 minutes, you know, what kind of team are we going to be? What are we going to look like? So yeah, changes, back to the changes. I mean, Fisher for me, if he's fit, obviously he, he had gastro last week. If he's fit and ready to play, I'd be putting him in the side. Um, I'd be bringing out a... I think I'd be bringing out either a Philp or a Noons, personally. Um, Philp... It's interesting because Philp showed more last week than his first game. So you you want to reward that, um, but we want the win. And that's the key there. So Fisher for me is probably one of the only changes. I'm still, to be honest, I'm a little undecided. I mean, I don't want to bring in a Kennedy or... Um, for a Harry, I, I, if Jack's fit, we don't know yet. I'm going to wait for this report to come out. But if Jack's fit, I, I think he should come into the side as well um, to present as another option there, and maybe even run with a Bont and Pally, for example, because Bont isn't so quick, uh, and, and maybe Jack could do a role on, on Bont and Pally. I'm not sure. I think the reason I'm saying that is because we saw him do a little bit more of that midfield stoppage tagging work last year towards the end of the season. Uh, he had a good spell on, on Nat Fife in the second half of that that game at Optus where we won. So, you know, it, it's all up in the air, but I, I definitely want to put it out to you guys for what you think uh, and how you see this game going. What are you looking at? Who are your changes? And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a... It's going to be a long wait, a long wait in between games, but I think we need it. I think we, it's good to have a break. It's good to freshen up. You know, they're in a new environment, a little bit of sun, uh, a few smiles, and, and get the boys going, hopefully, with plenty of energy to start this game. So let me know what you think. Changes, tactics, whatever you're seeing from the doggies and how we can expose them, let me know in the comments below. And we, we've got to get this win. We've got to try somehow to get this win. Go the Mighty Blues. Hey!